Hey C3, welcome to The Creek This Week. And uh, today I just want to talk to you about something that's probably on everybody's minds, and that's the Ukraine. And when we think about the violence that's going on there, the uh, a rough and violent takeover of one country, unprovoked of another, and we're filled with indignation, I thought maybe this is our time to put uh, to good use some parts of the Bible that some of us in normal situations are find very uncomfortable. The parts of the Bible I'm talking about are the imprecatory psalms. That's a fancy word. Imprecatory means um, to imprecate, to curse, basically. And we're uncomfortable with it, maybe for two reasons. One is we think that human beings are inherently good and that we should never curse another human being. Or perhaps on the other side of it, we imagine that uh, we are as fallen as anybody else, and why would we want to curse somebody else when we ourselves are deserving of God's judgment? But I think, friends, that there is a place for us who, who want to join God in his good work in this world, who see ourselves as sinful, who nevertheless, when we join God, can come against evil people who make evil plans and call for God's judgment on those, uh, those plans. I'll give you an example of an imprecatory psalm and imagine you uh, praying this over the designers of the current carnage that's going on in the Ukraine. The Bible says, if a man does not repent, God will wet his sword. He has bent and ready his bow. He has prepared him, his deadly weapons, making his arrows fiery shafts. Behold, the wicked man conceives evil and is pregnant with mischief and gives birth to lies. He makes a pit, digging it out, and falls into the hole uh, that he has made. His mischief returns upon his own head, and on his own skull his violence descends. There was a... Um, seminary student I was reminded of in the 1970s in Northern Ireland, and he was given an assignment by his professor to write out a psalm in his own words. And uh, he chose one of these imprecatory psalms, and one of the phrases that he transliter translated into his own situation was, he prayed for all terrorists who intended to bomb uh, children in marketplaces, that their bombs would blow up in their faces. And his professor chastised him for creating such a prayer saying that it was too violent for a follower of Jesus. And I just wonder if that was um, uh, not um, bad counsel on the part of that professor, that in fact there's a place for us to join the psalmist in his indignation against evil men who plot evil. They have made themselves the enemies of God. And so if we want to really join God, AC3, I think there are times when we recognize that to hate is not inherently evil. Because when we hate what God hates, then we're joining God in the place where he has chosen to be, which is in perfect goodness and righteousness and justice. And so when we are joining God there, we love what God loves and we hate what God hates. And surely God hates evil men who create evil plans for selfish, greedy, and violent reasons. So... As we look at what's happening in the Ukraine and we see that very thing playing out, it's okay for us to uh, call down God's judgment on evil plans. And you can pray for that. At the same time, you could pray for the repentance of someone like Vladimir Putin, who, like all of humanity, is a subject of God's love and a candidate for salvation. So can we get that right? I think we can. So we got to walk and chew gum at the same time. We can be people of incredible mercy and grace. And at the same time, recognize that there is a real battle going on in this world. And there's real evil in this world. And as followers of Jesus, we recognize that that evil is something that God has given everything to resist. Um, and as we are called into his family by grace, we join God in his stand against evil. And um, let us then not be afraid to call down God's judgment and resistance against evil in this world. And then to practically in real ways, like you did this week when you prayed for the, Ukraine, the Ukrainian church and you wrote out those prayers this week. And when you gave to the refugees that are streaming out of that country, you're joining God in his fight against evil. Let's keep that up as we are gospel people. So we'll see you guys all this weekend. We are continuing our series called Find It. And we're talking about finding um, a hope in a world of despair. All right, we'll see you then.